this video, I'm going to talk through the basics of your rack sequences, what types are available, what you'll need to look out for, what functions might be useful to you, that sort of thing. It's aimed at anyone starting out in your rack or thinking about making the jump into some doorless jamming or into generative ambient soundscapes. So what I'm not going to talk about today is every single option on the market. There are literally hundreds. So a beer for about a month. Here's some from VCV rack and you can see there's pages and pages of them and here's some from modular grid again pages and pages of the things so you can go and take a look at VCV rack and modular grid and take a look at what they are and what's available but by going over some of the major types and what I've looked at and why it'll hopefully give you a better understanding of what you might need and what to look out for. And the best way, I think, to think of modular sequences is as sequencing systems. You'll probably eventually create your own system made up of a number of different modules, which may include one main all-in-one module that can control lots of tracks and have various CV outputs. Something like my Erica Synth's Black Sequencer, which I'll come to later. I've done a whole review on that, which is well worth looking at if you're interested in an all-in-one solution. And you might add that to some additional units for increased functionality as your system expands. But what's important here is that everybody's needs will be different. So first, let's break it all down into the major requirements or the sort of major functions. And nothing tells you you're being fed some new information like a few graphics. So here's my lame and very low rent attempt at building a sequence schematic. So the first thing any sequencing system needs is a clock. No, not that sort of clock. And yes, the gags are as lame as the graphics. But don't worry, I'll leave my sorry excuse for comedy there. As your teachers will have told you, there's a lot to get through. So concentrate. So we need the clock producing pulses and they could be at variable rates. So you can have different timings from the same BPM. Whether that's external or internal in your system, it could come from a MIDI clock from your door or a groove box, or you may want to control external kit as well. So we'll throw a MIDI connection in there, although admittedly, this isn't strictly necessary. This clock then drives your pattern, which is created step by step. So we need a way to program this, and here we have a representation of a simple 16-step sequencer. Looks a little bit like my Intelligel <laughs> Steppy, not that I've ripped it off in any way. And this will need to produce at least one of the following signals. Triggers, which are short pulses and generally used for things like triggering a drum module. Something that needs just a simple indication that it needs to fire. And then we've got gates, which work a little bit like triggers and can often be used in the same circumstances. But the difference with a gate is that it can be programmed to be a specific length. So for triggering an envelope, for example, the gate will hold the envelope at the sustain stage so you can play different length notes. And then we have control voltages, which are programmed within a range of values so you can fine tune your parameters. So these are used to control the pitch of an oscillator or the size of a control voltage going into pretty much any CV input on any module. And if your module is calibrated for tuning, then it'll output the Eurorack standard volt per octave. There are others, um, but volt per octave is the standard. And it'll probably also have a quantizer in it, so it'll send stepped values, so 12 values per octave for 12 notes per octave. So your oscillator will play musical notes, not just random pitches. And this means you can plug this directly into an oscillator and the notes and the scaling should work perfectly. So everything inside this grey block gives us our sequencer or our sequencing system. But as I say, not all sequencer modules or modules within your sequencing system will all have all of these. The IntelliGel Steppy, for example, which I'll demo later, doesn't have its own internal clock, but it does have programmable steps and it sends out triggers. But importantly, it forms a part of a sequencing system, so we'll need a clock in order to use it. The Turing machine, again one I'll demo later, is great for producing random control voltage outputs to a clock, but again this doesn't have its own internal clock, so we'll need the clock from somewhere else to use this, and it doesn't have programmable steps, so if we wanted to trigger its control voltage in a particular rhythm, we'd need something else to trigger the rhythm we want, something like the Steppy perhaps. And it doesn't quantize to note values, so if, for example, we're happy for it to play every step, but we want to play notes to a scale, we'll definitely need some sort of quantizer. Or you might want to add the steppy for programming percussion to the same clock, and then you're well on your way to creating your own system. 
So that gives us an overview of the types of signals, modules, and basic operations you're going to need, but there are a whole host of different functions that you can add on top of this. So that's a quick overview of the different types, but it does show that overall you'll need to think about a few things. First and the most important is the functionality and what you want it to do. And there's a huge range of other functions that you might want or need depending on how you intend on using your system and what sort of music you're producing. Self-generating random ambient drones will need a completely different approach to four to the floor techno. So you need to think about things like randomization of pitch or CV, and that's the probability of events occurring. Do you want to be able to program events to occur every now and then? So being able to set the likelihood of it actually triggering so each bar is slightly different. Or how about programming them to occur at every set number of loops? So a snare fill may only happen on every eight bars. Then there's the bar or pattern length or the number of steps per bar. Is eight steps enough or would you need at least 16, which gives you 16th notes for four beats, a pretty standard setup for dance music. You can see the steppy and the black sequencer are set up in groups of 16. Here's the 16 on the steppy, the 16 buttons on the front panel are the 16 steps and the 16 knobs on the black sequencer represent the 16 steps. But on each, you can move through four pages of 16 to give you 64 steps in total. And then you wanna be able to link those patterns into a song. So do you need a song mode? The Erica black sequencer has got one, but the steppy doesn't. And then there are finer details like micro timing and swing. Do you wanna be able to control the swing per step, for example, or do you wanna add ratchets? Do you wanna be able to repeat steps? And what about MIDI compatibility? So if you're anything like me, all that information is a bit overwhelming at the start. But knowing those functions exist is the first step. And if you didn't know about them before, well, at least you do now. The second major aspect of the functionality to take into account is the complexity of the interface. How hard is it to pick up and use? From my experience, for example, the Rene is absolutely amazing, but it's really complex and you need to fully understand what's going on as it's driven by these CV inputs and uh, these different logic functions. It's brilliant, which is why you see it all over the place, but sometimes you have to work out how to get what you need. But the Erica Synth Black, on the other hand, is equally complex complex in its own way, but you hardly need the manual at all. Once you've used it once, you can sort of find your way around it and understand what everything does. But then it's not a CV driven and not necessarily designed for the complex interactions of those different control, control voltages that the Rene is. Although it does actually have CV inputs that haven't been implemented yet. So uh, ask me about that in a, in a few months time. But my point being is it's much easier to pick up and use. And the third main aspect of the functionality is do you need to save everything? Do you need to save your patterns? In the modules I'm about to run through, you can save what you've done on some, but not on the others. So the Steppy does, I think there's eight save places, but the sequential switch doesn't. The Bloom does, but the Turing machine doesn't. And finally, you'll need to keep an eye on the basics, like cost, size, and power requirements, because as I've found, they can eat into an awful lot of space and funds very, very quickly. I've already mentioned a few of the units I've got here, which cover quite a few of the basic bases, and that's why I've decided to keep them all to make this video before getting rid of what I realize I'm not gonna need. So let's take a look at some of those now, and I'll show you how those functions are implemented on each of these. Okay, let's start off with the Bloom, as it was the first one that I purchased. Um, you can see we've got two gate outs, two CV outs, and we've got two channels. We've got a blue one, and we've got a green one. So let's just play both of those, shall we? Here's the, uh, here's the blue. And I'll just turn that down, and here's the green. <laughs> yeah, not tune them or anything, just plugging it in to sort of show what it does. And we've got loads of different functions here. So we've start off, we can see we've got the, the eight LEDs, that's for your eight main steps, but we've got up to 32 steps. So if we hold shift, we get these different functions here. We've got length, we've got scale, so you can change the musical scale, we've got the order of the notes, we've got the pattern, we've got the division or the multiplication of the clock, we've got slew, we've got ratchets, 
And we've got the notes here, we can turn our notes on and off using this. You can maybe see the LEDs lighting sort of dull. Let's just play it. So the length there, we've got it on one. <laughs> yeah, let's turn this to four. Turn this one off. Now we can change the length. We can go to eight steps. Then that's nine steps. We're on the second page of eight. Third page of eight with that LED there. And the fourth page of eight. So go up to 32 steps. So let's have five for now, shall we? And we can see here we've got the clock out, the clock's flashing there, and we change the clock rate with this here. But we've also got a clock input there that I've got this coming into from the black sequencer. We turn the rate all the way down. The clock rate will now change as I play with the dial on the black sequencer. There we go, so now we're using an external clock. So what I'm showing here is that we've got two channels. We've got a clock in, we've got a clock out, so that we can actually play it with all the sequences. We can sync everything together. And the fun thing on this is that's called a fractal sequencer, and we have this thing called a path, and this other one called branches. And what that does is it sort of starts randomizing the notes from the pattern that's playing, so it starts building and then coming back and then changing and then coming back again. So get some sort of really interesting different patterns from it. To get the idea that works really well actually not on things that are quite fast like that but if you're doing some sort of more ambient chilled out stuff stick that through a delay and just every now and then it starts changing the notes so uh, a really interesting little sequence of that but as i say you get two channels out of it you don't have to use this path and branches you can program it exactly like you would any other sequence so you can change the notes You can tune it. And there's loads of visual feedback from these various LEDs. So, great little sequencer. And as I say, on slower sequences is where this really shines. For me, on doing faster stuff, you heard there that the, the randomization sort of randomizes it a little bit too much. It goes so from sort of um, one note to sort of two octaves below it could do with being able to control that a little bit more as far as I'm concerned. Maybe you can from a recent update, but I don't know how to. So just demo that again. So it's going a lot bassy rather than staying within the confines of the sort of pattern that I've put there already. So let's just show you a couple of other things on this then. Maybe show you the, the order. And you can see the when the LED is orange in the centre, it's going forward or it's going backwards or back and forth or random we can have as well. And the one you've selected is, is uh, or the sort of type of order you've selected is indicated by the middle orange LEDs as well. So forward, backward, back and forth, and random. So a really, really nice little unit that. And that's why I bought it as my first one. I can do a bass line and a lead line. I can program them perfectly, get them doing exactly what I want them to do, or they can start going off and doing their own things. Really nice. Thank you. 
next up we've got the Turing machine. And that little demo was all sequenced by the Turing machine. And this was something that somebody commented I might be interested in after seeing that I was using the Qubit to get some random style patches because this is basically a random generator. It's got these sort of eight bits across the top. It will play um, completely random, or you can lock in that random pattern. Then I've got this voltage expansion here, so I can sort of do some little adjustments with it. I'll just demo it all in a second, but this is one of those things that doesn't have its own clock in. I have to use the clock in from another sequencer. I'm using it from the qubit here. And it doesn't tune itself. So the voltages that are coming out of this, that you've just heard in that demo, aren't tuned to any notes in particular. They're just pitched CVs. So let's just show you how this works, shall I? Let's bring it into the sequence out here. So we're just ignoring the voltages module for the minute. And what we do is put this on sort of straight up at 12 o'clock and we're just generating random. Okay, so if I turn this all the way to the right, it will lock in a pattern. And you can hear that's repeating constantly. And we can take some of those bits out. There's all these various bits playing that are generating the random tones or the random voltages, I should say. And now we've just got one bit going across the top that we can see there. And now if you look at this voltages, this has only got one bit playing at a time or generating the CV at a time. So let's plug this into the out of the voltages. So this is just going into the, this is just go, so this is just going to the CV in of an oscillator. Let's turn that up. And there we've just got a standard eight-step sequencer. And I'm generating the actual notes using these sliders here. And I can change the scale and shift it and all stuff like that. So it does act like a real old-school standard, really simple eight-bit so eight step sequencer, I should say. But then we can start adding some randomization. Let's just add some with the Turing machine. And you can see there's more than one LED flashing on the voltages panel, which means there's more bits creating the CV. Don't quite understand how it works, but it's doing something like that anyway. and then just go fully random if we like. So the trick with this is to basically find something you like and then start playing with it. And every time you come to it, you're gonna find something different. Might take a little bit of time, but you always do find something it's really good fun, but you can't save anything. When you come back to this, you can't do anything. And as I say, it can't play along with anything else as things stand because it's not in tune. So you need something like what I've got just above it here, which is a quantizer to take the random CVs from something and to put them into a perfect pitch. So we look at that now. Taking the output from the Turing machine and putting it into the note CV on this and take the output of this and put it into my oscillator. And you can see here the different notes that are playing and we can change the scale. We've got it playing a C major at the minute. Let's make it a D major. 
Is it? I don't know. That's a major minor. C minor. Then maybe just change some of the notes. So we've got just C's and A's playing. C's and G's. But we know this is tuned and we can slightly change the tuner and change the transpose, the octave range, all sorts of different things. Let's just play around with the uh, with the Turing machine for a second again. And that's quite nice. Let's have a little play with that. So you get the idea, that's what a quantizer does. You can change the input range, you can change the octave, you can transpose it, you can put portamento on there. Let's put some portamento on, see how that works. And you can see that sort of slide in between the notes there, it's pretty cool. Let's make it a bit longer. Let's make the actual pattern a bit slower. Let's turn it down on the bloom. So if you're playing around with something and to generate random CVs, you may need to get yourself a quantizer. You can just use an LFO and stick an LFO into the quantizer if you like. Should we try that? Let's take this and put it into the maths. So again, you get the idea. I mean, you could use a, a sample and hold for that maybe to get some random voltages and then um, quantize them to a certain scale. Loads of, loads of different things you can do with that. But you may not need a quantizer at all. <laughs> so that's why I'm just showing all these different things. That was all getting really interesting, so I sort of graduated to the Rene. This came up cheap on eBay and I thought, yeah, let's have a play with this because it can do some more interesting stuff that's not too random and can play the notes I want it to play and maybe in um, almost random ways. Or if I want to, it'll just play the same pattern over and over. So um, I'm using here just to demonstrate this, this output from the maths, and that's just a constant voltage, so this triggers the Rene, and basically you've got an X clock and you've got a Y clock, and those clocks determine how these are played. So when you get an X clock in, it moves in the X direction. When you get a Y clock, it moves in the Y direction. So you can get all sorts of sort of basically random ways of playing the same 16 notes. So here I've got the, just a constant one so you can see what I mean. So if I play this note over and over, tune it. And if we come here, you can see which notes I've actually got tuned. So it says here, that's a C, D flat, D, E flat. So let's put them all on. So 
So you set your tune in using that. And then you use a clock to move through it. So let's bring a clock in, shall we? Let's turn it into a more of a normal pulse. That, as you can see, I've only got an X clock in, so it's only playing through the X axes. Let's bring another clock in to the Y. And as those clocks are unrelated, it's completely um, crazy the way it's doing it. I should really bring something that's a division of one of the other clocks, so it does it at the same sort of sort of rate. Let's try that. So I'll bring a clock out of the black sequencer, which I've got running here. I'm putting that into a clock divider, bringing one out at a certain rate. And then bringing this one out through another rate. So, really interesting this. You don't need the um, the Y clock in. You have these different logic pages and you've got these different logic here. You can have the clock plus the modulation, clock all the modulation and the modulation, clock minus the modulation, all those sort of things. So that you can work out lots of ways of manipulating this through the clock ins. And also you've got this sort of snake mode as well where it'll, it'll just snake round them. So you don't need the second clock in. So tons of functions in this, and it feels like a lot of them are hidden, but they're not. They're all in there in these sort of these function um, graphics here. But you've got to know what they mean, and you've got to play with it a fair bit before you can use that well. I found I had to use a few YouTube videos and read the manual, then go back to the YouTube videos, then go back to the manual, then have another little play with it. And every time I come to play with it, like now, for example, I'm thinking exactly how do I get that other snake mode where it goes round in a sort of spiral? Ah, forgotten. Uh, not as easy as you'd like to come back to, but really super flexible. And that's why you see it all over the place. And you do have a few user memories as well. I'm not going to go through all the functionality here, primarily because uh, I, I, po I couldn't possibly do it right now, and it'd be a video well over an hour on its own, I suspect. But hopefully I'm showing that it's an all-in-one sort of solution. It's extremely flexible. I say all-in-one, but it doesn't have a clock. But it does have CV, and it does have gate. And this is the Mark 1. The Mark 2 has an another axes to deal with and more lights and stuff like that. So the reason why I got the Mark 1 was so I could work out how it worked and if it was for me before spending an extra couple of hundred pound on the Mark 2. And it is good, but I do find it quite difficult to get to grips with. I think the Bloom is much easier to understand and to get to grips with than the Rene. But there are a lot more things you can do with the CV with the Rene. And as I say, that's why you see it all over the place. It is really popular. Moving over to the Steppy then from IntelliJ. This is a really flexible little step sequencer that outputs up to 64 steps on four tracks. You've got A, B, C and D, and I've put them into the endorphins uh, triggerings for the kick drum, snare drum, closed hi-hat and open hi-hat. This hasn't got an internal clock, you need a clock in, so here we go. A 
and it's really simple. Here's your four tracks, A, B, C, and D, and we can look at what's on each of those. There's track A, this is the kick, and track B, that's the snare, track C, that's the open hats, and track D, the closed hi-hats. And what you'll notice here is that I've got just a two-step pattern on the closed hi-hats because they repeat constantly. I have got on the kick drum, on the kick drum I've got a 32-step pattern, so let's look at page two, this is page one. So we go into select mode, press two, come out again, and that's page two. So go back into page one, page one of the kick, page two of the kick and if you listen to the pattern itself you can hear that the kick drum um, is different over the two bars. Let's play it again. And I've just changed the mode there so it flicks from page to page as it plays. And you've got these edit modes here, so you can change the gate length, the clock divide, the swing, the delay, the probability. Um, you, can, you, you can loop it and save and load. There's eight different positions you can save and load in here as well. So let's just look at maybe, looking at the clock divisions, let's listen to the closed hi-hat on its own, shall we? Let's do it to that. We need to select the closed hi-hat pattern. Now looking at that, go into edit, go to clock, and it's at 1 16th at the minute, and then we can slow that down to 2 16ths, 4 16ths, an eighth, etc., etc. So. So we try some swing as well. <laughs> Perhaps a little bit too much swing there, but you get the idea. This isn't outputting any CVs whatsoever, it's just triggers, but it's a really great little unit because you can trigger all sorts of different lengths on your four separate tracks. So you can get, depending on what you're triggering, you can get some really nice complex rhythms. You play in, I don't know, five steps on one track, seven steps on another, nine on another, and you can just get these sort of really sort of evolving sort of um, really sort of nice percussive sort of ethnic style rhythms, really nice. Or you can just do straight up techno if you like, but lots in a really small space, which is really, really handy. Another pretty odd little unit is the sequential switch. And what this does, it takes a clock in, I'll just bring a clock in here, and it just moves through the eight steps of the pattern. You can see the clock coming through the eight steps there. I'll just turn these off to make this nice and simple. And you can either have signals coming into these eight and then going out. So it'll select sequentially signal one, signal two, signal three, signal four, and then send it out to wherever you want it to go. Or you can bring a signal in and it will send that signal out through one, two, three, four, etc., etc. So here I've got two outputs from the same oscillator. It's the black wavetable VCO of America synths. So I've got the main oscillator and the sub. So one's playing the sub, one's playing the main oscillator, and that's all. They're not going through any ADSR envelopes or anything like that. And this is coming just direct into my sound card. So let's bring the gate out of the black sequencer, or sorry, the clock out. And there, I'm just bringing in different steps in and out. You can mute the steps or you can skip the steps. So if you skip them all, I'm 
There are lots of other little tricks you can do with this, but they're the main functions of it. Again, it doesn't have its own internal clock, and it's but it's part of a, of a sequencer system, I suppose. It just inputs signals and then fires one to eight out or brings one in and then sends that to eight different places. But a really handy little unit, you can do some really cool stuff with it. You could, for example, have um, four different outs from a single oscillator. So let's just do that now. A sine, a triangle, a square, and a sub. So here I'm using the Qubit Bloom to produce a sort of simple eight step pattern and that's been modulated through each of these five different outputs from the black VCO. Not the most inspiring <laughs> melody, but hopefully you get the idea. That's what a sequential switch does. If you had, for example, some noise coming in, you could send that to all various different filters, and then you've got various percussive sounds all from the same noise source. And finally, we've got my all-in-one solution, which is the Erica Synth Black Sequencer. And I've done a really long, sort of detailed overview or, or online, essentially, manual of this. And it is so deep and it does so many things. It's pretty much all you need. It, you know, it doesn't do the same sort of things as the Rene does. It doesn't have that sort of CV functionality. But you've got 16 steps. You've got four different pages. Let's just take some of these leads out to make it easier to, to see what's going on here. We've got four tracks, we've got a CV out, we've got an, a gate out and we've got an extra out which is a modulation out on each of the tracks as well. Each track's got um, four pages of 16 so we can go through page by page. Let's just turn down the brightness on that display shall we. And it's got all sorts of things in here. You've got um, probability, you've got the type of probability on there. So the type of probability you can have a percentage chance or you can have it play one in every two, one, two in every three bars, three in every four bars, etc, etc. You've got gates, you've got the length of the gate. You have different ratchets. You can have up to eight ratchets per step. You can repeat steps up to eight times, you could have eight ratchets repeated eight times. And on those ratchets, you can have arpeggios and you can have scales. Uh, you've got shuffle, you've got micro timing. And the actual gem in here is this thing called the modulation output. And the modulation output can be set up to send CV, so separate CV, note information, you can have a decay envelope, an ASR envelope, or an ADSR envelope. So if we go into this, for example, you've got a different envelope that's output on the modulation bus, or the modulation output for each of your steps. So for your four different tracks, you don't necessarily need four different ADSR envelopes. Ingenious. So I'm a huge fan of this. Uh, and if you want to see exactly what it does, check out my um, Erica Synth's Black Sequencer review because I go into it in, in fine detail. But this can give me sort of two tracks of, um, of notes, plus you can get one, two, three, four, five, six different tracks of percussion because each of the modulations can also output trigger. So ASR and LFOs, forgot to mention the LFOs. So you can trigger from the modulation output as well. So this to me is an absolute winner. It's about 500 pounds. But that plus the Steppy, for example, Steppy gives me four tracks of really flexible trigger outputs, plus 
the additional tracks from the modulation or the triggers from the modulation on this, plus three or four different tracks of oscillators. So I'm honing it down to this and the steppy at the minute because I can still do random things on this. It has this magic button here. If you're on CV, press magic, it changes them all. <laughs> Don't know if you can see this. I've got a D sharp one, F2, F4, magic it, G5, C2, C5, and I can even go in and adjust how magic it is in that I can change the actual range of the notes that it'll pick. It's got scales, so you can change the type of scale. Whole tone, major blues, minimum, uh, minor blues, minimum blues, I was going to say, minor penta pentonic, is that major penta, major minor chromatic, or none at all. But if you want to see the black sequencer in action, go and check out my review. I don't want to really want to repeat myself again here. I've spent far too long talking about sequencers today as it is. So for me, the black sequencer can pretty much do everything. Add that to the steppy and I get a few more trigger outs. You know, I think that's my sequencer system for now. I don't need the bloom anymore. The Turing machine's just a little bit too random because I can't save anything. And Rene, I really like, it does take a lot of work to get the most out of it. So it may sit around for a while out until I decide if, if I'm gonna use it or not, if I'm gonna get enough out of it that I, that I possibly can. That basically exhausts my purchases and experiments so far. There are other types available. For example, I've not um, included Euclidean sequences that you'll see. And VCV rack and modular grid, are really two great places to look at your options and see what's available. But hopefully this video will have helped somebody at least <laughs> understand a little more about the various options and what all the specifications mean and how it might all fit together into your own rack to suit your needs. And if you did find that useful, please hit subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss any of my uploads. I'm not as regular as some, so there's every likelihood you could miss them. And also maybe help support the channel through my Patreon page where I've got over six hours worth of tutorials to help you get the most out of your synths. So as I say, I hope that was of some use to somebody somewhere and I'll see you next time.